for you, so I'm not gonna die. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free 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 free Palestine! One, two, three, four, occupation no more! Five, six, seven, eight, Israel is the apartheid state! Five, six, seven, eight, Israel is the apartheid state! Israel is the apartheid state! One, two, three, four, occupation no more! Oh yeah, Gaza is the apartheid state! One, two, three, four, occupation no more! Occupation no more! Five, six, seven, eight! Israel is a terrorist state! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea, From the river to the sea,
for coming. Um, we're going to be here next week, Friday, 4.30 to 5.30, the week after, the week after, until Palestine is free. I know everybody here um, knows what's going on, so I'm going to uh, we have a list of speakers. My name is Margaret Sarfinger. I'm from Wham. And um, I just I was just so upset today when I heard about one soldier was kidnapped and they're all squawking about his release and I thought what about the babies that were killed? They'll never be released. And what about the children in wheelchairs now because they've been bombed? They'll never be released. And they'll never walk again. There's so much atrocities here that um, it's good to get together and protest and call your reps because all the reps are supporting Israel and then they're spending our tax money and they need our votes and we don't have to vote for them for this. Well, I'll have to see Green Party speaks for me actually. <laughs> um, the first speaker we have is Shireen Majni from Palestine. Hi everyone. I'd like everyone to know that uh, Mohammed Hussein, Hussein Abu Qadir that was kidnapped and burned was my cousin. And the one that was severely beaten half to death by soldiers is also my cousin. And all we want is peace. That's all we want. And to, for those that are in Gaza, for Syria and so forth, it's all we're fighting for. And hopefully, and you know, hopefully even return, hopefully, police, hopefully peace does come. And um, we thank everybody for the protests and helping us out and trying to spread the word of peace. Thank you. Uh, next we have Meredith Abbey, the anti-war committee. Thank you everybody for coming out today. This protest was organized by the anti-war committee, Women Against Military Madness, and the committee to stop FBI repression. I'm going to focus today on uh, wearing my anti-war committee hat, but also as a member of the committee to stop FBI repression. I want to thank people for coming. I think it's important also to say justice for Rasmia, and my friend Sarah will talk about that in a second. I'm sure that all of you are very frustrated, angered, saddened. You might have cried when you heard that the ceasefire that we had hoped for this weekend has ended. Unfortunately, Secretary of State John Kerry has used this sad, sad event as another opportunity to take a stance with Israel, unconditionally supporting them at this time, that they continue to kill people in Gaza. And I think that, I think again, this is another opportunity the Obama administration had to get on the right side of justice, and again, they took the wrong side. Many of us were together on Wednesday outside of Senator Franken's office. At Senator Franken's office on Wednesday, we had 300 people. And we stood together to say no to Senator Franken's agenda of unconditional support, both diplomatically and in terms of military aid for Israel. We had 15 people that were a part of that action that decided to go inside and occupy Senator Franken's office and to say that they were not going to leave until they got to tell Senator Franken what we thought about him representing APEC instead of representing the people of Minnesota. And they were successful at getting Senator Franken on the phone. However, when challenged about his agenda, Senator Franken hung up. Oh. Oh. Also, uh, what was his book called, Like Liars Lie? You know, he himself was called a liar, and he couldn't handle the truth. I think it's important that we take every opportunity to say no to the U.S.'s funding of this war. And first of all, it's important for us Americans to understand that we are paying for this war with $3, with $3 billion in aid for this year. But that's not enough, I guess, because the Washington war makers keep deciding to give more and more money for war. The U.S., while it calls for peace in the Middle East and says that they want a peaceful resolution to this conflict, has been doing the exact opposite out the other side of their mouth. The House plans to approve today $225 million in emergency funding for defending Israel. 
emergency funding. So that $3 billion of military aid wasn't enough. We need to send more. And the Senate has already approved that money this morning. So if you have not called this week your members of Congress, they need to hear from you again because they are seriously not representing us. Some Zionists were over here earlier challenging us on our beliefs, and I said to them, why does my daughter have to go to kindergarten in a class with almost 30 people when she's supposed to be learning to read, but we've got money to send abroad to go kill Palestinian children. We need money for human needs and not for war. Additionally, you might have read this week, because it was reported in both mainstream as well as alternative media, that Israel ran out of ammunition this week. We know what, while they ran out of ammunition, they were busy bombing schools and hospitals and homes and beaches where children are playing soccer. And the fact of the matter is, is that we have the UN coming out this week saying that their schools have been bombed six times in Gaza. And every time, originally Israel said, oh, it's a mistake. And now they say, oh, it's Hamas doing it. But the fact of the matter is Israel is using our tax dollars and our ammunition to do this. And the United States decided to give them another blank check this week. And the Department of Defense opened up their secret cache of weapons that they have in Israel and said, here you go. You guys can continue. And John Kerry says today he's surprised the ceasefire broke. How is a ceasefire supposed to work if you're giving people more weapons? That does not say that the United States wants a ceasefire to actually last. That is ridiculous. The United States is saying in this PR campaign that they support peace, when a matter of fact, they are arming for war. Our government has blood on its hands, and we cannot let this pressure die down. We need to keep this pressure up because we have a responsibility to the Palestinian people, regardless of whether or not you're Palestinian, regardless of whether or not you're Muslim, regardless, you, you just live in Minnesota. You have a responsibility to say, no, we are not gonna stand by and let our government join hand in hand with Israel in this outrageous war on Gaza. <laughs> a flyer for our protest we're doing next week on Wednesday. I know that a lot of people are not able to be here today because many people have gone to Washington, D.C., which is awesome because yeah. it is very good to take the message directly to the war makers. But I know that the folks from D.C. are going to be back by Wednesday. We're going to go to Senator Klobuchar's office, who also has a horrible track record on this issue. Um, Maybe not as bad as Franken, like, but like when you're at like an F minus 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 and somebody else still gets an F, it's still failing, okay? It's still failing. And so we want to take this message back to Senator Klobuchar's office and then we want to have a short march to the Star Tribune, who you might have noticed is not here today. They were not here last, last Wednesday. They were not here when we had almost 2,000 people in Columbia Heights. They seem to be having some trouble finding the protest. So we thought maybe we would make it easier for them to be able to cover the issue. So it's great for people to be out. Please keep up your work. Please keep up your pressure. And these Zionists need to hear us. Free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! about it. 
and we we're saying free Palestine. Free Palestine. Yes. <laughs> because I don't understand why they keep attacking us when we're not doing anything. Yeah. Even some of us, even yeah. some of us are thinking about about fighting. But others believe in peace. Yeah. And I do too. I think we should stop the torture and stop the crimes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We should write down his name and become maybe he'll be a future candidate for office. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what? Raj, what's your last name, Raj?
and, uh, and if you sign up, obviously you'll be getting the updates on her case. Also, if you go to stopfbi.net, you can read more about her and what is going on. Thanks so much for being here today. Freedom for Rasmia, justice for Palestine. 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 Freedom for Rasmia, justice for Yes. Yeah. Sarah? Sarah? I have a question about Rasmia and what they're doing to her. How many Jews were arrested when they came to this country after being imprisoned by the Nazis? That's right. <laughs> Did they well, thank you for that? coming and um, I hope to see you all next week and I come to the demonstration Wednesday. At Amy Klobuchar's office at 4? 4.30. 4.30. Yeah, 4.30. There's this flyer if anyone wants to get a flyer. And actually, she has a parking lot in her. There's an office building. They let us park there. Or you can park on the street. There's parking meters there. Yeah.